Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back to another video. My name is UEP, you are the viewers, and today we're going to be talking about the state of Florida. So this is a very important state, obviously, <clears throat> in the 2020 presidential campaign, but specifically to one candidate. And if you don't know who I'm referring to, that's Donald Trump. So this video is going to talk about why Donald Trump cannot win without the state of Florida and what he needs to do to win it. So, <clears throat> yeah, so we're going to start by filling out our safe states, you know, states that really have no way of going to uh, the other party. Uh, you know, Democrats start out with 183 safe electoral votes. The Republicans start out with, in this scenario, uh, you know, well, like, I'm just going to go normally what I would say ha would say would happen. <clears throat> start out with, whoops, not, not, not Mississippi. Uh, they start out with, uh, oh my goodness, I'm clicking on all the wrong stuff right now. 80 electoral votes. Now, most of you are used to seeing Utah in the safe column for me, but we're going to be talking about that in another video, actually, planning uh, to come out tomorrow. But, yeah, so, <clears throat> now we're going to do, um, uh, our likely states. You know, these are states that, whoops, no, I was on the wrong, states that really don't have a chance of going to the other uh, party, but, um, the margins could be weird there. Not New Hampshire, I'm... I really do digress. I don't know what I'm doing uh, today. Uh, maybe it's because I'm brain dead from school, but yeah. So, you know, you get all these likely states, uh, get them out of the way. Th then going on to our lean states, uh, you know, all these normal lean states that, that I like to characterize. Um, and so, yeah, that puts Biden over the 270 mark. Uh, and I'm just going to fill out the rest except for essentially excluding the state of Florida, where you would give Joe Biden the states and you give Trump that. So yeah, so you get 29 electoral votes left from Florida. And this is a pretty weak story map for Trump because I'm being not too kind to him, you know. I'm not giving him the Rust Belt, I'm not really giving him, giving him Arizona, and I'm definitely not giving him North Carolina. So that's bad. So he needs to win North Carolina and Arizona. That's just a way of life. He has to win those states. So let's just, excluding margins, actually, let's just clear this map or clean it up and just, you know, just get rid of the margins and just fill out uh, what what I think would happen. So this is what would happen, and, and we're going to be generous to Trump here because, you know, like when you fill out a map, it's, it's not exactly, you know, like when I fill out a map, I think Biden's going to win. So, of course, I reflect that in my map, but I'm going to leave out some of my... Uh, characterizations for Biden that might be uh, more controversial, and we're going to leave him at 268 electoral votes, and then we're going to um, just give Trump the rest, excluding Arizona, North Carolina, and Florida. So yeah, so that means we're giving um, as well as, as Wisconsin. That means that we're giving Trump main second district, giving him Ohio, giving him Iowa, giving him Texas, giving him Georgia without any further questions, and we're not giving and. The one seat that I could see going to Trump that I've already filled out is Pennsylvania. But we're not giving Biden Arizona. We're not giving him Wisconsin. We're not giving him North Carolina. And we're not giving him Florida. Now, he has to win. Trump has to run the table with these states. So uh, the good news for him is, is that these are all former uh, Trump states. But he, he, he's only still in Florida. He essentially has to pull a George W. Bush. Remember that Bush was trailing early on election day and he had to run the table. He won Arkansas. He won Tennessee. He won Missouri. He won... Um, I was about to say Iowa, but he won Ohio, uh, and he ended up winning in Nevada and Colorado. <clears throat> so that left Florida, which, all, which as we all know, was very, very close. So, yeah. All right, so this leaves us 241 electoral votes for Trump and Pence. And let me just turn my note. All right, I already have them turned off. That's good. I don't want to have someone text me in the middle or, or FaceTime me in the middle of the video. So that leaves Biden at 268 and Trump at 241. So... By the way, I don't think he's. I don't think Trump's going to win Arizona. I don't think he's going to win Wisconsin. I certainly don't think he's going to win North Carolina. But um, yeah. But assuming, and again, these are all in play. I, I mean, taking a look at the JHK forecast. I mean, it is very probable that he wins. I mean, he has a. Let's see, he has a thirty-two percent chance of winning Arizona. He has a seventeen percent chance of winning uh, Wisconsin, and a, and a forty percent chance of winning North Carolina. So, you know, in a best case scenario, he'd one hundred percent carry all these states, but. I don't think it's gonna happen. Now let, let's focus and, and hone in on Florida. So uh, I always forget to pull up that one tab. So in 2016, uh, you know Joe Biden. Oh my goodness, Hillary Clinton lost the state, even though she was ahead in some polls. Now on now on election day, the polling did put Trump ahead very narrowly, but Hillary Clinton was still uh, considered the favorite to win Florida. She ended up losing it, but Trump won. 
Uh, and then, you know, it, it's been very solid. It was very solid for Barack Obama. Well, not solid, but, I, but you know, this is a swing state, so of course he's not going to win by a landslide. He beat John McCain here. It was still actually a lean state, so it's interesting. And then John Kerry had a pretty bad performance here when he lost to George W. Bush by literally a likely margin, just barely fitting into the likely margin. And then, as we all know, infamously, Al Albert Arnold Gore lost Florida by 500 votes. Devastating. <clears throat> and I get mad just thinking about it, so I can only imagine how mad he is. So, uh, anyways, Donald Trump ended up uh, winning Florida, narrowly, so let's say he holds it. He wins. But let's say he, or let's say that we don't know who's going to win Florida. Let's look at the polling data. Joe Biden is currently ahead by 4.1. He was ahead at one point by, you know, 7. But that's but it's since narrowed up, and, and it's since become a small margin, or small, uh, well, not within the margin of error, but, you know, uh, it's certainly better than it was in March for Biden. You know, we had even polls. But remember, the polls underestimated the Democrats in Florida, or underestimated the Republicans in Florida in 2016. In fact, the polls put Trump ahead by 0.2 on Election Day. He ended up winning it by, let's pull this up, he ended up winning it by essentially 1.2. So that's a 1% margin of underestimation. Now, Biden wins Florida if the polling uh, does, you know, stay this way, and you add in the 1% for Trump. But let's say it gets a little closer, and it gets to a point where it's it's well within the margin of error. Donald Trump could, could very well carry it. So let's just say that he does carry Florida. He wins the election. In fact, he can win Pennsylvania. He can win Minnesota. He can win Nevada. So, yeah. But let's say that he doesn't win Florida. Let's try to find a solution where he still wins, uh, you know, still wins in Wisconsin, still wins in Arizona, still wins in North Carolina, but loses Florida. Well, he could very well lose Ohio, he could lose Iowa, and he could lose Georgia. He could lose the 2nd District of Maine and the 2nd District of Nebraska. However, I don't think that that's going to happen, so let's get into more realistic possibilities here. So, you give Trump the edge in Florida. He can still lose to Florida, he can still lose all of these states, which I think is exactly what's going to happen. However, let's try and find a scenario where he loses Florida but wins the election. This is going to be the toughest thing yet. So we first got to go, obviously, give him Pennsylvania. Uh, he still loses, so we got to give him another state. And where does that city come from? Can't be Florida, because that would be the, our, our next instinct. But, you know, mm, like, you can give him New Hampshire, still doesn't win. Doesn't do it. So it's probably not going to be from New Hampshire, though. But you can give him, you know, give Nevada, still doesn't win. So it has to be from a bigger state. It has to be from Colorado, which is not going to happen. It has to be from Minnesota or Michigan or Virginia. And Virginia and Colorado are not flipping. So it comes down to Minnesota or Michigan because New Hampshire is too small. Although I guess you could arguably have him win New Hampshire and win Nevada, but that's very, very unlikely. He should not be hensing his bets on that. So it comes down to Minnesota and Michigan. He has to win in Minnesota. He wins. The polling actually in Minnesota has been a little bit better for him. There was a poll that came out that was, you know, it's a right-wing bias poll, but uh, it's still worth noting. Polls of Biden head by six. Obviously, he was ahead by ten at one point, but um, the polls have narrowed up significantly. And this poll from our good poll Trafalgar group has it as a tie. So, he can win Minnesota. But he should not be hunting his bets on it. He is not favored at all to win Minnesota. A Republican hasn't won Minnesota since 1972. Walter Mondale, of all people, carried it against Ronald Reagan. So, it's unlikely. Maybe he wins Michigan. That would give him the victory. But, again, Michigan is a solidly blue state, at, like at this point in time. I know it went for Trump in 2016, but things have changed since then. The Democrats won the midterms there easily. In the governor's race, they won by 11 points. In the Senate race, they won by eight points. So, Michigan is really not in play for Trump. In fact, he's halted as there. He's halted as in Michigan. So, that that only leaves Minnesota. Or, whoops. So, that only leaves Minnesota. And he should not be hunting his bets on the state. He has an 86% chance at losing. So, what's the bottom line here? He needs to win Florida. He 100% needs to win Florida. He cannot win without Florida. I mean, Minnesota is not a red, blue state. Or is not a red state. This is a solidly blue state that will continue to be solid, at least for the time being. So, he needs to win Florida. 
this is a must win for, state for him. Biden, he has it a lot easier. He can literally just win the Rust Belt uh, and just win the election. That's all he has to do. Trump, not so much. He has to win. He has to win Minnesota, win Pennsylvania, and that's his path to winning without Florida. So, guys, thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you'd like to follow Instagram, that would be much appreciated. And if you'd like to donate to my Patreon, that would help me out a great deal. Thank you, and I'll see you all tomorrow.